This is my homemade CNC made for under $900 three years ago today. And chances are that you subscribe to this channel because of this video. That's because it is the most popular homemade CNC on all of YouTube. And today I'm going to take you on a tour of this 2018 Brad made CNC. I'll show you all of its quirks and features of which there are many. Then I'm gonna take it for a test drive and then I'm going to give it a Brad score. Before we get started, a quick reminder to head over to my website, diybuilds.ca, where you can find all sorts of project plans from the modern era. All plans are free of charge and come in PDF format. Check out DIYBuilds, diybuilds.ca. So let's talk CNC. I don't think it would surprise anyone, but by today's standards, this machine no longer costs under $900. Oh, dear God, no! Obviously, lumber prices are up, as well as the electronics costs from China. I've thought about updating the Excel spreadsheet on my website, which gives links to the products used, but they will require constant updating and be way too time consuming. What really matters is the description of the items and in what quantity. The source used for all this stuff will always vary, especially since most of my sources were Canadian and most of you are not. Now let's take a look at some of the various things done to this machine over the years, starting with adding the five kilowatt laser to the Z-axis. Welcome to DIY Builds. We're going to build a laser machine today. Get down. So here we see the laser, which it's still working perfectly fine. The only thing is I had to replace the stock fan as I broke it. I think I dropped a screw in here or something and it totally got trashed. But anyways, as mentioned in the video, I did end up wiring at a toggle switch for the fan as otherwise it would be running constantly when the CNC is powered up. So the next upgrade was the Z-axis linear guides. Now I replaced these flimsy single shaft with these fully supported, uh, I guess they would be U-shaped bearings that grab onto that. And this made it so much more rigid. There's no play in the Z-axis at all anymore. However, I recommend these rails, but they didn't come with these pillow blocks or this Acme shaft. So I'm not sure what people have been doing because I had all these parts, including the couplers from this kit. So that's one thing you have to kind of look at too. So the next thing that was done was adding the belt tensioners to the X and Y axis. There's two on the Y axis and one up here on the X axis. In that same video, I changed out the Harbor Freight router to this Makita one, but the Harbor Freight one, the bearing must have gone or something because the bit was wobbling around and it was giving me horrible results when I was trying to do inlay work. Well, it was fun while it lasted. So a question I get asked, how well is this machine holding up? How often do you use it? And the truth is it's a hobby machine. I use it pretty much in the videos you guys see me using it, and maybe a little bit more. Like this machine definitely has under 100 hours on it. So there isn't that much wear and tear. As you can see, basically these V-groove bearings just kind of get oily and gunked up with dust, but there's no wear on the DIN rail or anything at this point. So I'd say everything is holding up just fine thus far. Hi, I logged into the website shown for building CNC machine under $900 in DIY builds and followed instructions on becoming a member. Also updated my woodworkers guild that was a link on DIY builds. I am however not able to locate the plans to build the CNC machine as shown in videos 1, 2. Can you help me build your CNC router? Ended up joining woodworking guild of America. I can't find your free plans can't as find offered plans in the video. Help. List. I've searched all over the website. Where are Just they? Curious, also, I'm trying to get build plans. plans. Not shown on parts of the DIY what CNC source? router table. I'm looking for the free CNC router to have the portal to my own CNC router. I was hoping to find the download plans for one. Where can I find your DIY CNC router? I was wondering if you still have the CNC router I'm very interested in building one. Hi, I watched your video. Especially yours. Since you indicated that you were building a CNC and full-on building one yourself, I'm looking for a builder. I cannot look. I'm looking for the build plan for the CNC. I'm looking for a CNC builder. I'm looking for a CNC builder. I'm looking for a CNC builder. So it seems like a lot of you guys are having trouble finding the plans on the website. I'm going to run through it right now with you guys. So up here we have woodworker plans free. That's not me. That's an ad. It clearly looks like an ad. You click here on plans, then shop project plans. Don't click any of this other stuff. This is all ads. You're going to get charged for stuff. My stuff is free. I've always said that. Shop project plans. Again, add, 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 add. There's a million ads. Some of us need to make money because this is all free, right? Scroll down, scroll down, lots of ads. And there it is, homemade CNC for $900. Click there, brings up the PDF. Perfect. So we exit out of that, and then we can see the CNC cost breakdown. This is the Excel file. It will open up Excel. In here, we see a list of the items, the quantities, and the prices that no longer are relevant. There's some links that may or may not work. And then down here is the hardware list. And that's it. 
Good luck. Cool idea. The problem with using wood is wood expands and retracts so much based on temps and humidity. I would have tried aluminum for the rails and gantry and wood for the bed. Good job though. No, that's kind of missing the point of the project as this is a budget machine. So using aluminum would have drove the cost way up even though wood is expensive now. But this is three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. It doesn't expand and contract. I mean, it does a little bit, but not the same as using regular wood. And seeing as this is now a climate controlled shop we're in, I don't expect the humidity to change or any kind of expansion to contraction with this machine. Could this cut 16 gauge sheet metal? The best answer I can give on what materials this machine can handle, just ask yourself, what would I cut with the trim router? Because all this is is a trim router that's being controlled by a computer. So if you can do it with a palm router or trim router, you can do it with this. Great video. I have one question. This router will work to cut hardwood 1.75 inch. I want to use to cut body blanks for guitars and bass. So the max depth of cut you're going to get is going to be solely based on how big of a bit you can get. Now seeing as this has a quarter inch collet, it uses quarter inch bits, the deepest I found for a reasonable price was about one inch depth of cut. And that's fine for me, I'm usually not doing anything super thick anyways. But if you were planning on doing that, you could go ahead and upgrade this to a bigger router with a half inch collet. Now those can easily have like two inch, three inch depth of cut bits, they're way bigger. And this machine shouldn't be able to handle that just, you know, taking more and more passes instead of one huge gouge cut because this really doesn't have the rigidity for that kind of cut all in one pass. Great video. Could the spindle control relay have been powered using 24V? That would be one less item plugged into the power bar. Yeah, it would probably work just fine, but that is a 24 volt AC contactor that I got from like an air conditioning unit or something online. So I really wanted to keep my power supplies separate. I wanted to keep the 24 volt DC for the control circuits just kind of on its own and island it out. 117, Windows 98 screensaver? You told us Windows 98 would be faster and more efficient with better access to the internet. It is faster, over five million. I know it's two years old, but I'm curious what kind of precision you were able to get with this build. So to see how accurate this machine is, you can go ahead and watch my NES controller coffee table build where there's tons of inlay work done in the top of that. And you can also go ahead and check my how accurate is it video, which I made a few years back. I'm so sad no full article for this video on your website. Please make one plus the laser CNC. No, I don't really want to do that. It sounds like a lot of extra work for not much gain, seeing as tons of people have sent me their viewer submissions on their own build of this. So the video combined with the plans and the cost breakdown sheet should be more than enough to build this machine. How's it held up over the last couple of years? Did the ply move or sag on you too much? I'm a little nervous to make a precision instrument like this from a material that moves. Yeah, I just plop this level down and it's looking pretty flat, but even if it goes out of flat or something like that, you can just run the surfacing bit over everything again and bring it right back to true again. I have one question, getting ready to give this build a shot and was wondering why the four axis kit? Why do you have to clone one of the axes? Could I get the same with a three axis kit and not have to clone one axis? Hope this isn't a stupid question and you have time to answer, getting ready to order parts. So I get this question a lot with being confused about the four axis, the A axis being a clone of the Y axis over here. And all it is is a clone and it's flipped or inverted in the Mach 3 software so it runs the same direction. Now you can't get away with just the three axis in this design. A three axis unit that only uses three motors would have like a lead screw through the middle of the table and something connecting it. This is a much simpler design and it just requires you to buy that extra fourth motor. Is it necessary to make the torsion box and table shelf bracing as tall as you did? How much rigidity do you lose as you go with a shorter box? Yes, I would say it's definitely necessary to make the torsion box this thick. Any thinner and I would feel like it would want to sag or something like that and I really didn't want that to happen. If you want, go thicker with it or add more ribs to it even. I was just trying to save money and, you know, I'm cheap. How about excellent machine, thumbs up. You could tell me what the guides you used are called and where you bought them. Thank you. Again, all of the materials can be found on my cost breakdown spreadsheet, which is available for free for download on my website. You go to plans and then shop project plans you just scroll down a little and you'll see it there. What can we do to interface a newer Windows 10 and no parallel port? Could you share what electronics to use for that config? Very interested in building. So because the control board I used had a parallel port, I went and grabbed an old computer from my dad just sitting in his basement that had a parallel port. It was a Windows XP machine. So if you're going to go ahead and use a Windows 10 or newer whatever machine, you need to go ahead and buy a controller board that works with that. Because I think if you use a parallel to USB converter, People have told me that doesn't work for these old parallel port run boards. So you're gonna have to just buy a machine that uses probably a USB interface right from the get-go. Hi, would there not be the ability to modify this to five axis for rounded corners, etc.? No, you couldn't make this into a five axis machine, but if you were smart enough and you could figure out some way to attach a rotary axis, that could be your fourth axis and that'd be pretty neat. 
Could you make a part like a specific size gear and then measure it with a caliper? I'm really interested in seeing the tolerances of the cut versus the intended size. I've actually started my build following your plans and can't wait to try it out. No, but if you go watch my how accurate is it video, that'll give you some information as well as you watch my belt tensioner video where at the end I do an inlay and that'll show you before and after and how accurate I was able to get it where the gaps are and everything. And the number one question that people ask me all the time is what would I change about this machine? And obviously I just answered the new router, the Z axis and the belt tensioners are an absolute must. The laser, however, eh, take it or leave it, it's whatever you're into. Now, another thing is what would I change if I could, if money was no object? And obviously I wouldn't use the DIN rails. They were so much cheaper than going with the linear rail. If you have the money, this machine would be 10 times better if you had linear rails. You could run this thing at such higher speeds and there would be more accuracy, less slop. But for a hobby machine, this thing is awesome. I love it and I would build another one in a heartbeat. Thanks for watching guys.